This question appeared on a video about using Excel VBA to create PowerPoint presentations. And what this user wants to know is how to copy multiple rows from Excel into a PowerPoint presentation as text, but not as an image. And we've got several choices for how we can do that. So we'll talk through a few of those as we go through the video. Just to get set up, I'm using some very basic sample data I've just copied from Wikipedia's list of highest grossing films. I've copied the top five rows from there and pasted those straight into a brand new blank Excel worksheet and just tidied it up a little bit with some extra formatting. The data itself really doesn't matter for this example. You could just type in a random set of characters into a block of cells in a new worksheet and you'll be ready to go and follow along. I've already saved this file as a macro enabled workbook. So to get started with the code, let's head to the developer tab, open up the visual basic editor. We can insert a module into the project and then create our first subroutine, which will be called something like create new press or presentation if you're not feeling quite as lazy as I am right now. Uh, in order to talk to PowerPoint, the easiest thing to do is to set a reference to the PowerPoint object library. So I'm going to head up to the tools menu and choose references and then scroll through the list to find Microsoft PowerPoint. It'll be in there somewhere. And then when I found that, I can check the box next to the PowerPoint 16 object library. The exact number you'll see there will depend on exactly which version of Office you're using. So it might not match exactly what I've got there. Once I've checked the box, I can click OK. And that means I can now declare a few variables. So let's declare a variable to hold a reference to the PowerPoint application first, or at least an instance of the PowerPoint application. We'll have a variable called pres as a PowerPoint presentation. And I'm also going to declare a variable called sl, which will hold a reference to a PowerPoint slide. Next, we can create a new instance of the PowerPoint application, essentially setting the application running. So we can say set ppt equals new PowerPoint dot application. And we can use the application object to create a new presentation. And I'd like to capture a reference to the presentation. So I'll say set pres equals ppt.presentations.add. The next thing I'd like to do is create a new slide in the presentation. So to do that, I'd also like to capture a reference to the slide. So I'll say set sl equals pres.slides. Now, I'm going to show you what I normally do myself when I'm doing that. I tend to cheat when I'm adding slides. There's, if I hit the full stop key, I'll see a really tempting looking method here called add slide. But I tend to ignore that one. I'll show you why in just a moment. I tend to revert back to the old add method, open up some round brackets, specify the index number of the slide I want to create. This essentially sets the position of the slide within your slides collection followed by a comma, and then I can pick a from an enumerated list, a nice simple constant that indicates the slide layout I'm going to get. So PP layout blank will create a blank slide. So I'm going to enter that and then close the round brackets, and that'll create my new blank slide object. If I hit the F5 key to execute the code, you'll see that I've got exactly what I wanted, a new blank presentation with a blank slide in it. So why did I cheat here and use slides.add rather than slides.add slide? Uh, well, let me show you. I'm just going to comment out my set SL line. I'll keep that in there for later on, just in case I'd like to bring it back. And instead, I'm going to say set SL equals pres.slides.add slide. I can open up the round brackets. And at this point, everything looks pretty similar. I need to specify the index of the slide I'm creating. So let's say number one again. But then when I type in a comma, I don't get prompted with a list of options. I need to reference not a, a constant. A constant is basically just a keyword which has an underlying number. This requires me to reference a type of object, a custom layout object. And I get no help with this whatsoever. I don't even know what custom layouts are available. <laughs> so what I'd need to do first, if I wasn't familiar enough with PowerPoint to know what custom layouts were available and which specific one to reference, I'd need to find out what they are. One way to do that is to loop through the custom layouts collection of the presentation. So I'm going to say dim i as integer as one way to loop through these objects. I need to have a presentation available to do this. So I'm going to add this extra code then after I've created my new presentation. Then I can say for i equals, I'm going to start with index number one and then say to pres dot slide master dot custom layouts dot count. So I'm using the, the uh, numeric 
loop, the for i equals loop, so that I can find out which numbered custom layout I need to specify. So I'm going to say for i equals 1, and then I'm going to say next i, and then I can say debug.print, and I'm going to print out the value of i so I can see which number I'm looking at, as well as pres.slidemaster.customLayouts and then refer to the index number that I'm looping over at that point in time. Finally, I want to reference the name property of that custom layout. And at this point, I can execute the subroutine and I'll find, I don't have a new slide created, of course, but if I switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, I do now have a list of custom layouts from the slide master of this presentation. So I can see that the one I want blank is numbered seven, so to make use of that and put it all together, what I could then do is declare a variable to hold a reference to a custom layout. So dim cl as PowerPoint dot custom layout. And then having created the presentation, I could say set cl equals. And at this point, I'm just going to copy this line of code here, pres dot slide master dot custom layouts with the letter i in brackets. I'm just going to replace the i with a number seven. That's the one that represents a blank slide. And then I can get rid of this for next loop entirely. And I can get rid of my integer variable as well. I won't need that any longer. And then I can bring back my line, which says set sl equals pres.slides.addslide. Number one, followed by a comma. And then I can reference my cl, custom layout object. I can then close the round brackets and then if I run the subroutine again, I will get a new presentation with a blank slide using a custom layout rather than one of the older built-in layouts. So I guess the choice is yours. It depends on, on which, which technique you prefer. I guess this is technically better because it relies on the new style custom layouts rather than the old slide layouts, but this is far, far more convenient to use. So I have to admit, I tend to stick to using that when I'm typing code for myself. Now that we know we have a blank slide available, let's copy and paste some Excel data into it. I'll start by referencing the range of cells I want to copy, starting with range A1. Of course, that'll be range A1 on whichever worksheet is active when the code runs, but as I only have one worksheet at the moment, I can be pretty confident that's gonna be sheet one. I can then refer to the current region property of that range. Current region is the entire block of cells that range A1 belongs to. So it's almost as though you'd selected cell A1 and pressed control A on the keyboard to highlight the entire table. I can then simply apply the copy method to that and then refer to my PowerPoint slide. And you might expect to be able to just paste directly into the slide, but that's not quite how pasting works in PowerPoint. You know, everything on a slide has to belong to the shapes collection. So in order to paste, I've got to reference the shapes collection first and then apply either the paste or the paste special method. We'll talk about paste special a little later on. For now, we're just gonna go with the basic paste and we won't worry about modifying that object in any way afterwards. We'll just see what happens when we run this subroutine and we ought to end up with a brand new slide and our Excel data copied and pasted in as a PowerPoint object. So you can see you've got the, uh, the PowerPoint table design tools and layout tools available. I can select the cells in that table and edit the text if I wanted to. So I could update the titles of my films or modify the, the, the other data. I can rearrange the table, reposition it if I wanted to. So if all you care about is some simply formatted text pasted into PowerPoint, this is by far and away the simplest way to do it. Just in case I did want to manipulate the shape after I finished pasting it, it'd be useful to get a reference to the object. And to do that, I need to know what type of object the paste method returns. If I click at the end of the paste keyword and press Control and I for information, it tells me that the return value of that is a shape range. So if I declare a variable at the top here, I'll say dim sh as PowerPoint.shaperange. And then I can say set sh equals sl.shapes.paste. 
Now a shape range can consist of multiple shapes and I can manipulate either a single shape in the collection or the entire set of shapes in the shape range. If I want the entire set of shapes, I just say sh dot and then refer to the properties and methods. If I wanted to reference a single individual object in there, I can say sh and then open up some parentheses and then refer to the index number of the shape I want to manipulate. As I've just pasted a single thing in, it sh there should only be one item in that, in that shape range collection. So at this point, it shouldn't matter if I say sh dot, and then let's manipulate the top property. The top property sets the distance in points from the top of the slide to the top of the shape. So I'm going to set that to 20 and then sh dot left and this indicates the distance in points from the left of the slide to the left of the shape and set that to 20 as well. And then if I run the subroutine again, rather than ending up with our table in the middle of the slide, it sits 20 points from the top and 20 points from the left. Now let's look at some other techniques we could use to paste that table into the PowerPoint slide. I'm just going to comment out my original set sh line and then replace that with a new one that says set sh equals sl.shapes.paste special. If I open up some parentheses after that, you can hopefully make out that at the end of the tooltip, it says as shape range, so I can still capture the result of paste special in that same variable. But the interesting thing here is the first parameter, the data type parameter, what am I pasting my data as? And you'll see there's quite a lot of choices in this list. Now I know that we're trying to avoid pictures. That's the original question we want to paste as text, not as a picture. But just to quickly mention that if you did want to paste pictures, while there are various different file types available, not all of them are relevant for the type of data you're pasting. So if I'm pasting in some Excel data, some Excel cells as a picture, the one I need to use here is PP Paste Enhanced Meta File. So just to demonstrate that that does work, I'm just going to quickly indulge myself and show you that it does work. If I just run that subroutine with PP paste enhanced meta file, you can tell that it's a picture because if you have it selected, you've got the picture format tab in the ribbon rather than the table tools tab. Okay, enough about pictures. Let's get rid of enhanced meta file and replace that with one of the other text types. So I'll double click on the word PP paste enhanced meta file and then just delete that. And if I press control and spacebar again, I get back my list of options for pasting into the slide or into the shapes collection of the slide, I should say. I'm going to head down to the very bottom of the list at this time and find the one that says PP paste text. So this is by far and away the simplest text type you can paste, but I guess the original question wanted text. So um, being slightly facetious, this would be the simplest way to get a set of very basic text typed in. Uh, you can see you've essentially created a text box. You've got the shape format uh, tab in the ribbon. So that's just a, a very simple shape, a text box shape. And you could format that in whatever way you wanted afterwards. If you wanted something that was just a little bit better than plain text, we could use RTF or rich text format. So I'm just going to get rid of the PP paste text and replace that with PP paste RTF. So rich text format. This doesn't make a huge difference, although there is one subtle difference. If I run this subroutine now, you see it's still plain text, but it has copied the font color of my title text. If I just highlight that top row and then just change the font color to, well, let's just go for red, or any color would do. Um, so it's picked up on the fact that my header row of the table has a white font color. So tiny, tiny subtle difference, but a potentially useful one. There's one final way we're going to look at to paste this table into the PowerPoint slide, and it's perhaps the most elaborate technique of the lot. Rather than just pasting it as a PowerPoint table or shape or PowerPoint picture, we're going to paste it as an Excel object. And to do that, we're going to set the paste special option to say PP paste OLE object. So that's object linking and embedding. Now this is going to cause us a small problem when we try to manipulate the object. Let me just show you the small problem first. If I run this, and my data gets pasted in there, it looks like a table. If I select it, it's actually represented just as a simple shape. But if I go back to my VB editor, you can see I've got a runtime error, object required. If I hit the debug button, it's failed on sh.top. 
Now you may remember I mentioned a few minutes ago that when you refer to a shape range you can either manipulate the entire range of shapes or a single object within it and for some reason when we paste as an OLE object we need to specify that we want to manipulate a single shape not the entire shape range. So if I modify that to refer to the first object in that shape range, index number one, and then simply continue running my code. When I get back to PowerPoint, you'll see that it has now finally moved it. Now on the surface, pasting as an OLE object doesn't appear particularly useful. It certainly doesn't appear to satisfy the criteria of the original question to paste as text and not as a picture. If I select the object, I go to the Shape Format tab. I've got some very basic formatting tools to format the object, but I can't get at the text inside those boxes. It doesn't appear to be a table at all. But the true power of OLE objects doesn't really become apparent until you double click on the object. If I double click on that uh, representation of my Excel file, you might be able to make out Excel flashing away in the background here. If I select the Excel window, it's warning me about having to enable macros. So that embedded object I've pasted into the PowerPoint slide comes along with the macros I'm writing in this workbook. If I choose to enable those macros, you can hopefully see that I've basically opened up Excel within PowerPoint. So now I can edit all these cells using the exact same tools as Excel provides me with, just within the PowerPoint presentation. To get out of that, I simply need to click away from the object and that will close down Excel and revert back to the PowerPoint menu. But yeah, there's an awful lot of things you can do with an embedded Olay object, much more so than just a simple PowerPoint table and certainly more than with a basic picture. Finally, there's one additional quite cool thing I can do with an OLE object, and that's to link it to the original source file. To do that, I need to access one of the extra parameters of the paste special method, and it's the link parameter, the one right at the very end. I've got a couple of ways to get to that. I can type in lots of commas to get to the link parameter and then set that to MSO true. I'm not personally a big fan of the multi-comma style, so what I prefer to do is name the parameters. I still, I still need at least one comma to separate my parameters, so each parameter must be separated with one comma. But if I name my parameters, it doesn't actually matter which order I do it in. and I don't need to type in many, many commas to skip over the parameters I'm not using. So data type colon equals paste away object, link colon equals MSO true. If I run that now, I'll end up with what looks very much like the same thing. I appear to have lost a little bit of functionality though. If I select this, it's still I still get the shape format. But if I double click on the object, I don't get a little mini version of Excel opening up within PowerPoint. And that's because I don't need to, that the file that controls, that feeds that object is already open in Excel. It's the one I'm working on. So watch what happens if we get back to, uh, go back to the sheet one. Let's say we wanted to change the film that's at the top of this list, Avatar. It wasn't that good, was it? It was all right. Um, I think a much better movie that should sit at the top of this list, Predator. That should have been uh, the, the highest grossing movie of all time. So that was released in 1987, goodness me. Um, so having done that, I've updated two cell values. If I switch back to my PowerPoint presentation, you might just about be able to make out that they've also updated in PowerPoint as well. If I close down my Excel file, I can close that down, I'll save the changes. PowerPoint still retains the information. And if I double click on that PowerPoint uh, object, it then opens up the actual original Excel file. So oh, that's pretty cool. Um, maybe worthwhile using OLE objects above the basic tables. It means you can keep your PowerPoint presentation up to date simply by updating your Excel workbook. So there we are, a bunch of different ways to paste Excel data into a PowerPoint slide. I think that fairly comprehensively covers the original question. Um, if not, please feel free to ask more questions on the topic and I'll do my best to answer them. Can't promise a video answer to every single question that everyone asks, but I'll do my best to keep up with them. So thanks for watching. See you next time.